Hello, everyone, and welcome to Voices, Sexy, Diverse Romance with Talia Hibbert. I'm Allison Carvalho, the events manager for Barbara's Bookstores. Barbara's has been a Chicago institution since 1963, and we are so excited to be bringing you this virtual event. We're a family owned and operated bookstore, and we pride ourselves on creating community spaces within our stores as well as out of them, like these events. Before we get going with our conversation, uh, I want to give you a quick tour of Crowdcast for those of you who haven't been here before. First of all, I always like to preface this, we are still relatively new to virtual events and to Crowdcast. So please be patient with us in case we are experiencing any technical difficulties. If things go si sideways, don't worry, we will get things back up and running as soon as we possibly can. Please make sure to chat with other book lovers in the chat on the side. We will also be sticking some book recommendations as well as recommendations of other events that we have coming up within the chat. If you notice that your video is freezing or lagging at all, please make sure to click on the little gear button that's on the, I believe, bottom right hand corner of your screen. Um, you can change your HD setting to 360. That tends to help with any lag you might experience. The last 10 or 15 minutes of the event will be open for questions. So if you have a question that you'd like to ask Talia, please place it in the ask a question function on the bottom of your screen. You can also upvote other people's questions. If you don't necessarily have a question that you wanna ask, but you see a question that you like, please upvote that question and it'll move up in the queue. Also make sure to check out the big green button at the bottom of your screen. That's where you can pick up a copy of Take a Hint, Danny Brown. Um, I'm so excited to talk about this book. Um, it's a wonderful book. I can't recommend it enough. So make sure to pick it up. Uh, we also are offering a 10% off discount. If you um, put event in at checkout in the uh, discount code section. So please make sure to do that. And lastly, we always want this to be an informative and fun space. So please make sure to be respectful to your other book lovers as we are having this event. I think that's everything. So we're gonna go ahead and bring our incredible author to the screen. She is a USA Today and Wall Street Journal bestselling author who lives in a bedroom full of books. Supposedly there's a world beyond that room, but she hasn't quite drummed up enough interest to investigate. She writes steamy diverse romance because she believes that people of marginalized identities need honest and positive representation. Her interests include makeup, junk food, and unnecessary sarcasm. I would love to bring to the screen Talia Hibbert. Yay! <laughs> Hi, how are you? I'm great, thanks. How are you? Doing lovely, doing lovely. Okay. So I wanted to start today a little bit different because we are talking about diverse romance. I asked you ahead of time to bring in some recommendations of some amazing diverse books that you love. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna hand the screen over to you so that you can recommend some amazing books for us. <laughs> okay, fab. Gosh, the pressure. Okay, let's just get into it, talk books. So the first book that I want to recommend is A Duke, The Lady and a Baby by Vanessa Riley. And this is a historical romance. Unlike I think any other I've ever read, it is first of all, very much a rom-com. I love historical rom-coms. This is so funny. Um, it's about a West Indian heroine living in England in the, I don't know, historical times, in the olden days let's just say, the olden days. She's recently widowed and her son has been taken from her and she has been forcibly put into, I think, Bedlam to prevent her basically controlling her son who's inherited a lot of stuff. Um, you can tell I'm vague on the technical stuff. What I loved was how sweet the hero is. The hero is actually her son's legal guardian. So he sweeps into the scene and kind of fixes things. And she poses as her own son's wet nurse to get close to him and figure out if this guy is worth trusting or not. And he is, he's a super cinnamon roll and he's a war hero and he is an amputee, which is another element that I really liked. And I love them both and they're so funny and sweet. You can tell I'm getting excited because I'm talking really fast. Okay, next up, Temporary Wife Temptation by JC Lee. I love this one so much. As you can see, it's a Harlequin desire. I love category romance because it gives you exactly what you want, precisely, perfectly, efficiently, 
so many feels packed into this little book. That's another reason I like them, because you can put them in your pocket. Original. <laughs> For me to say that, everyone likes that. Um, but yeah, I love this. It's an office romance. He is like a super alpha CEO, super alpha, but also a nice guy. We love to see it. She works for him. She is very badass and he needs a wife to stop his family interfering like a fake wife. So she becomes his fake wife and then suddenly it's real. Who saw it coming? Possibly one of my fave tropes. And then finally, I have Empire of Sand by Tasha Suri, which is a fantasy romance. I love fantasy romance. I feel like we don't have enough of them. Um, so this is, again, in the olden days, but like fantasy olden days. And it's in like South Asia, but like fantasy South Asia. So geography is different. And there's a cult. And there's an arranged marriage. And there's, this is very difficult to describe because it's complicated and there's magic and it's cool. But basically, so many emotions, 10 out of 10, would recommend. So um, those are my book recommendations. I hope you enjoy them as much as I did. <laughs> Wait, I can't hear you. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, wow. good. <laughs> I was like, wait, am I? <laughs> no, I was still muted. I was so excited because I was like, you hey, sound great. And I totally realized I had not hit my unmute button. Those are incredible recommendations. I am super excited to pick them all up. They sound so um, like a beautiful array. It's like a beautiful <laughs> array of romance genres as well, which I love very, very much. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Alrighty, so let's go ahead and get started talking about you. So um, tell us a little bit about your writing journey and how you started writing. Okay, well, I've always really enjoyed writing. Um, I could never really finish a book until I decided like that I really wanted to make a career out of writing. And then it was like, well, you'll have to finish a book to do that. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I wrote like a really, really short novella just to prove that I could finish something. And once I managed that, it was a lot easier to get longer and longer and hopefully better. Um, so I started self-publishing, putting my books on Amazon just to see what happened. And it was kind of like, I was in the last year of university and I thought I'll give myself this year to see if I can make this like a viable job and and I did so cheers to that or I probably would stop. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh that's amazing. Well and I love kind of I think that's one of those things that a lot of people don't always talk about is kind of like there's so many different journeys that le that are in the publishing world. There's so many different ways you can go. And mm -hmm. so you kind of had a little bit of all of it, you kind of experienced both sides of it. Is there something about, um, like what about that kind of interests you as far as like, which one do you feel best in, whether it's self-publishing or kind of traditional publishing? Is there one that you kind of lean towards? That's tricky. Obviously I self-published most of my books. I think like over 10 of my books are self-published. So it's what I know. And I was a bit nervous with my first traditionally published books that it would be hugely different, but it's not really that different. Someone else is in charge, which means they're more in charge of deadlines, but it also means you don't have to do everything yourself. So on balance, I'd say I like them equally for different reasons. Yeah, I could definitely see that. There's a little bit of a load off when you're not having to deal with like all of the marketing and like <laughs> all of the cover design and all of that kinds of stuff. Exactly. So I want to talk about the Brown sisters. Um, what inspired you to write about these sisters? Well, the first book is about Chloe and she's kind of the character who kicked it all off for me because I knew that I wanted to write. <laughs> I should probably be doing this too. Why am so bad at this? This is the book. <laughs> so... I knew I wanted to write like a chronically ill character in a rom-com. I wanted that kind of fun perspective, a perspective informed by my own experiences. And then once I started thinking more and more about Chloe and her life, that's kind of how her sisters came to be because I was like, obviously she is an eldest child. So then she needed younger siblings. <laughs> um, and then it all just kind of spiraled out from there. 
That makes sense for sure. And they're all they're all like super distinct and interesting. So I'm I'm we're gonna dig into that a little bit more later. But I just I really enjoy just how um just how they're such strong characters. Like each one of them is just so full of life and has their own like beautiful vibe. Oh okay. gosh, I love it. <laughs> So you say in your bio um, that you believe that people of marginalized identities need honest and positive representation. Besides the obvious, what is it about represent representation that sparks inspiration for you? Um, one of the things, as I said, that I love about these books is that they're just, they're, the women are so complex, multi-layered. And so I just love to hear a little bit about that. I think essentially I, I spent so long kind of imagining myself or my world into the books I was reading where actually me and people like me were nowhere to be found. I'm not sure if that grammatically made sense, but let's just keep going. So <laughs> especially because I grew up reading a lot of library books and I live in a very small town. So the library books kind of represented the people who were coming into the library, most of whom weren't like me. So for so long, I would just imagine it. And then when I discovered authors who were actually writing like lives that I recognized, I was like, oh, I don't have to imagine it. Like you can just, this can be in the book officially. Incredible. <laughs> <laughs> and that really is what got me like so passionate even more than ever before. So I think it's the idea of like recreating that feeling that makes it so satisfying to me to write a more varied world into my books. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. And as, as someone who is also a POC, like that that feeling of of not seeing yourself reflected in books, it's it's a very particular feeling. And what's lovely is there are books like yours that are coming out and are changing that and are giving people an opportunity to see themselves reflected in the world. Um, and one of the things that I think is really wonderful is your books are really filled with joy. Like these women are, they're not, they have their struggles, but they're not like struggling. They're not trying to push through at like this heavy oppression, like whatever is going on, it's a part of what's going on, but it's not what's driving them. It's not the only thing in their lives. Um, and so I was curious about like, what kind of sparks joy for you or helps you find ways to infuse that joy in your writing? Well, I think one of the reasons why my books are quite positive is because reading and especially reading romance is what's always given me joy. So I guess when I'm writing, I associate it with like all these positive feelings and then everyone in the story is just really happy. And I'm like, yes, love this for you. <laughs> so, I love that like, vibe on you. Like exactly. that's so cute. Like, you do that, girl. <laughs> I'm like writing what I want to see, what I want to feel, maybe what I wish there was just more of in reality, just nonstop happy endings. Oh yeah, oh girl, <laughs> 2020, like all we want, all we want are happy endings. Can't we just have a few? <laughs> <laughs> that is, but that is the beauty of reading, the beauty of the escape that is, is yeah. we kind of get that chance. <laughs> so I want to talk a little bit about Get a Life Chloe Brown. Um, so she features a main character, as you said, that is dealing with chronic pain um, and invisible diseases and medical discrimination. They afflict so many people over the world, especially women and especially, especially women of color. Um, so what was it like kind of writing about dealing with chronic pain and pain management? And was any of this experience kind of cathartic for you, considering your experience with fibromyalgia? Um, it was actually... I wouldn't say it was cathartic, but it was really interesting because I realized that in my other characters who don't have chronic pain, I had had to expend effort to write that out. You know, cause like when I wake up in the morning, I have to lie there for a while before I can, cause I also have um, a joint condition. So when I wake up, I'm like a little robot. I have to warm up a bit. So I'm writing people who just hop out of bed and that's actually really weird to me. So when I was writing someone like Chloe, whose just interaction with the world is my reality, that came a lot more naturally. And it was like, oh, it's actually been effort not to write this. It's a lot more normal to include the pain. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's so interesting. I hadn't thought about it that way, but that totally makes sense. I mean, when you're writing, it's kind of like you end up, you have to spend a lot of time really thinking, trying to get into your character's 
head. And yeah. so when you're able to relate it to your own experience, it's like you can, that means you get to spend energy thinking about other things, thinking exactly. about other aspects of them and not having to spend time thinking about like all of those kind of, obviously not mundane is maybe not the right word, but like those basic oh, like, things no. that you don't always yeah. think about, you know, <laughs> no, for sure. Um, Ooh, I almost forgot. I was going to put a link to that book in the chat. Let me go ahead and yeah. pop that in there because y'all should definitely pick up that book. It is so lovely. Um, like <laughs> big, big hunky bad boy on a motorcycle. <laughs> like, come on, y'all. We got to get in it. <laughs> like, I'm so here for it. Um, Okay, so now I want to talk about your latest book that just came out. Uh, take a hint, Danny Brown. Yes, um, I have that one too. Yes, my copy. I had it with me, and then at some point it ran away, and I'm so <laughs> mad because I wanted to hold it up too. I love that book so much. Oh my gosh, um, it was so fun. There's witchy vibes and broody rugby players and like hilarious hashtags, but at the same time, there's also dealing with mental health and processing grief and like dealing with um, like fighting against toxic masculinity. Um, you have this really wonderful ability to kind of vacillate between like such like wonderful, positive, great things and also things that are harder to deal with and harder to process. Um, can you tell me a bit about where these characters came from and like kind of your way of weaving these like deeper, heavier issues into such a lighthearted book? Yeah. That was a lot of question, by the way. <laughs> I acknowledge that was a whole lot of question. <laughs> um, well, the kind of vague concept came from the book is set at a university and the hero is a security guard. And it kind of comes from when I was at university, um, something similar happened to me as happens to Danny in the book. She got kind of stuck during a fire drill. Um, and when it happened to me, it was like mildly traumatic. So <laughs> after the fact, I was like, how could that have been like so much better? And I kind of invented a character in my head who would never let something like that happen because he was super nice and competent. <laughs> and then <laughs> I, <laughs> that is kind of where the hero of this book came from and like the setting. Um, it really spiraled out from there. but. Danny's character came from kind of the imagining the Brown family and like the, cause they are from quite a privileged background and thinking about how you might have a lot of things going for you, but still maybe have some interior issues. That's where I started with her and then, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Yeah, she is, I, I really loved just how, um, how do we put it? Like, she's this this badass who like knows her boundaries and i think that is something that i think can be so hard especially these days when like we don't know how to deal with like everything that's going on and i just loved get reading a character that was just like i know where i'm at i know what i'm about this is what i'm about <laughs> take it or leave it it is what it is and like, it was just so cool to kind of read a character that was kind of like that um, I wanted to know, I was thinking about this earlier, um, when it comes to kind of romance as a genre, what is it for you that you feel like you're seeing kind of going, because I know, I've noticed personally when I'm walking through the bookstore, I'm seeing this diversity kind of reflected and I'm seeing so much more of it. What does it feel like for you, like kind of talking about how you were reading books before and you weren't really seeing like mm -hmm. a huge amount of diversity and like, are you and like the other kind of more diverse writers, are y'all like in each other's DMs? Are y'all chatting? What's going <laughs> on? <laughs> well, when I kind of found these more diverse stories that really changed my perspective, a lot of them were from self-published authors. So I wasn't seeing them in my library or the bookshops, but I was finding them on my Kindle when I got my own debit card and I could buy romance novels without my mum knowing. Yes. And suddenly I was finding all these. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, that was like, I feel like the number one reason to buy a Kindle if you're going to get one is, like, is just for that moment. I'd like to think that we've gotten at least slightly past that and that we can like hold our heads high and oh, walk yeah. into a bookstore, pick up our copy. Like I yeah. feel, I'd like to think that we're beyond that. 
I'd like to think. The only reason I did that is because I was like a teenager and my mum would have been like, what are you reading? Inappropriate. <laughs> entirely fair, entirely fair. <laughs> So it was like indie authors who inspired me and then like the the authors who really helped me when I was starting out were those same authors. And we have been talking a lot now about how this wave of diversity is becoming more mainstream and publishers are like actually interested in our books and stuff. Whereas, you know, I always assumed that publishers wouldn't be interested in my books. And then some of my friends who have been doing this for longer than I have, have been rejected in the past. And now there's more interest. So. It is really great to see actual change in the industry. It does feel like there's change happening and maybe faster than it has previously. And it's really nice both as an author and as a reader to have like, you know, now I have favorite books from such a range of authors. I can make a favorite book list that is entirely diverse authors, whereas in the past that would have been really difficult. And it's just great to have that kind of level of choice. Heck yeah, that is exactly how I feel. Like. It's so wonderful just to kind of get to know there are so many, I mean, there are so many stories and we all knew this because like people are diverse. There are so many humans in the world, mm -hmm. but it's wonderful to be able to kind of get to experience that and experience it where the conversation doesn't lend itself so heavily into the otherness being what that, what the book is about, where yeah. the book could be about a whole bunch of other things. They just happen to be from a marginalized community in some capacity in some exactly, way. Exactly, yeah. I thought just a little bit of that. <laughs> okay, so I do not know how much you can tell us, but can you tell us anything about Act Your Age, Eve Brown, which is coming out in March? Any tidbits you can share before that release? I'm always so nervous about this question because I actually don't know how much I'm allowed to say. <laughs> so I just bring it and just hope no one gets annoyed with me. But um... <laughs> We won't tell. Barbara's Barbara's going to keep her mouth shut, I promise. Nice. <laughs> so Eve's story is set in a small town at Bed and Breakfast. She interviews for a chef position, but during the course of the interview, it becomes clear that she and the owner of the bed and breakfast are complete opposites and like insta enemies um, because he's very uptight and she is the exact opposite. Um, so after a bit of an argument <laughs> ending the interview, she storms off and then she accidentally runs him over in her car. Um, <laughs> so... <laughs> He's kind of injured um, and she, she ends up having to help him with the B&B &B because he's injured, even though five minutes ago he was like, you will never work at my esteemed <laughs> bed and breakfast. <laughs> um, that happens. I guess there's like a lot of forced proximity, temporary boss employee, um, and obviously enemies to lovers vibes. <laughs> oh, you know, that classic story, boy, <laughs> Boy hates girl, girl runs over boy. <laughs> we all know it. <laughs> we all know it. You know, that super cash story. Like, that's always how it goes, isn't it? <laughs> oh my gosh, I love it so much. I'm so incredibly excited about that book. It's going to be great. Um, all right, so that is all the questions that I personally have, other than a couple of other basic questions that I'll probably ask. Um, but if anyone has any questions that they want specifically to ask, please, please, please pop them in the ask a question function. Um, we have one right here. So Fatima asks, are there any romance tropes that you haven't written about yet that you'd love to include in your future books? P.S. Your books have been have single handed have been single handedly getting me through online classes. So thank you. Ha ha. Heart around face emoji. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. That's lovely. I'm going to heart. That's my heart around face emoji. <laughs> um, Gosh, I think I've forgotten the question. Oh no. That is entirely fair. It's oh, wait, about... I remember the trope okay. thing. Yeah. Yes. Are there um, tropes you haven't written yet? I really want to write an arranged marriage. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> or like a marriage of convenience. I feel like they're separate, so I want to write both of those. Um I think that's highest on my list, yeah. Just marriages that nobody wants. <laughs> <laughs> Like, let's just talk about this marriage that nobody was on board for. <laughs> but they're going to get on board. Exactly. They're going to figure it out. 
<laughs> so I was curious about um, what have you been uh, writing? Have you been working on anything? I mean, obviously we're kind of, I don't want to say we're out of quarantine because at least for me personally, it still feels like we're in quarantine, at least in mm -hmm. some capacity. Um, but like, what has kind of the writing and quarantine experience been like for you? Or have you, what have you been working on? You don't have to give us like details on the work so much as like the the experience and process of working during quarantine. It's been like really horrible. I think I wrote like the majority of Actor AG Brown in quarantine and now I'm writing something else. And it's just, yeah, it's been horrible. Like Blood from a Stone would never do it again if I could help it. <laughs> if, I, if I'd known this was coming, I would have just booked the year off because <laughs> it's not been good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I would imagine so like, cause you're, you are on deadline for Eve as well as what the other project you were working on, correct? Mm -hmm. So it's like trying to write kind of, you're already writing under a pressure cooker and yeah. then let's go ahead and turn it on high and break the gasket and just see what exactly. happens. <laughs> it was like, I was like, ooh, creativity. And my creativity was like, no, I'm tired. I'm exhausted, I'm busy. You're just gonna have to do it on your own. And I was like, like how? Oh. You're gonna have to figure it out. <laughs> no, that is very real. <laughs> so we have another question from Chris Alice, who is asking, um, what are you working on right now? Is it uh, is it with a traditional publisher again, or will you go back to self-publishing for at least some of your books? Um, I'm currently working on a Christmas novella, which is with a traditional publisher, but I'm also kind of long term going to be doing self publishing and traditional publishing because I know I have some books that aren't very mainstream and probably no one's going to buy them because they're a bit weird, um, which I'm fine with. <laughs> Just selling myself. <laughs> so mix and match. I think that's kind of what's lovely too about self-publishing is like you can do that. Like you can, you don't ju you don't have to choose one or the other. If there's something that you know you want out there, but you think a traditional publisher might not do, it's like that's fine. I'll do it myself. <laughs> I'll be over here popping that book out in front of people, in front of the eyes that do want to see it. Exactly. <laughs> so, what is um, what is a book that is coming out? that maybe isn't out quite yet. Is there any books, like any arcs you've read recently or anything that's coming out that you're feeling like really pumped for? Yes, there's many. <laughs> yeah, I'm, hit me, I'm, tell me them all. I will try to, I'll try to get the pre-order links as fast as I can. <laughs> well, I mean, it's kind of cheating a bit, but one book that I read recently, it actually came out like the other day and I read it when it came out cause I didn't get an arc cause I'm shy. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I really cannot imagine anyone refusing you a book. <laughs> I was like, should I ask? But then I was like, no, that would be rude. So I just waited. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> so it was The Duke Who Didn't by Courtney Milan. And it was just incredible. A historical romance set in like a village that is almost entirely, I think they said it was like half white and then the other half of the population was mostly Chinese and it was a really cool community. And it was about a guy who's been coming to this annual event at the village every year since he was a kid and he's been in love with this girl in the village, but she doesn't know that he is a Duke. And he's like, Aww. probably gonna have to tell her that before I marry her. <laughs> and it's all very awkward and sweet. <laughs> oh, that's so sweet. Oh, that's lovely. That actually might be a book that isn't ready for, that isn't here for us yet, because I can't find it in our store, which I think neat. means it might only be available overseas where you are. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> but that is okay. You, they make their way over to us. It just doesn't yeah. happen right away. So you <laughs> have to be patient. It'll probably be out soon. <laughs> I also read, um, just finished an arc of Spoiler Alert by Olivia Dade, Ooh. which was like amazing. Um, I really like Olivia Dade's books because she really focuses on plus size heroines. And I think she has like a great approach to writing that. And this one was super cool because it was set in the world of fandom. So two fan fiction writers who have been like virtual friends for years 
she doesn't know that he is actually an actor who plays the star of the show that they've been writing fan fiction about. Um, and then they meet in real life and she doesn't know obviously that it's him, but he knows that it's her and it all gets very complicated and it's great. <laughs> oh my gosh. So that one is available for pre-order. So I'm going to pop that in the chat right now. Um, and that is so darling. I am very excited about that. That is so cute. Uh, so cool. These books are just so great. <laughs> <laughs> like I I love me I love me some just like good old fashioned rom com vibes. Yeah. And I and it's interesting because like I don't know if you've experienced this, but I think that we're getting we're starting to get like a little bit of a resurgence of like movie rom coms. Yeah. Like thanks to Netflix, thanks to Netflix, Netflix has helped a lot in mm -hmm. that regard. Um, but there was like a solid like ten years where like. <laughs> you just could not get your hands on like a good old fashioned rom-com movie. Yes. And so for me, then it was like, well, books are the only way I'm gonna get these vibes because clearly <laughs> I can't get them from my movies. So yeah, I gotta I get them I, from a book. Will Smith alone was carrying rom-coms for a solid decade, but yeah. he could only do so much. <laughs> oh, so much. Like there's only so many things. It was like, and then like, I feel like before him, it was like Meg Ryan. <laughs> yes. so much so much meg ryan <laughs> and then it became the new meg ryan somehow and we all just were like sure like, this seems preferable to me but uh, like here's where we're at <laughs> all right does anyone else if anyone else has any questions please 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 pop them in the chat um I was trying to think if there was one other thing I wanted to ask you while you were answering the previous question and then it totally popped out of my head because that's <laughs> what I'm living right now. Um, how is, uh, like, because obviously you're over there, you are very far away and it's actually relatively <laughs> late for you. So I want everyone to know this woman is hard at work before like close to bedtime, chilling Sorry, with I us. Look so tired. <laughs> you don't look tired at all. You look glowing. You look great. Okay. <laughs> You're very welcome. Uh, but I was curious how like I know normally there would be a chance that you might have done some touring or some kind of book tours and things like that. And I was curious, like, how has these events been for for you? Kind of how has kind of marketing in the time of Corona? been <laughs> it's been i guess like it's a lot more than i would usually get to do because usually most of my audience i think is in america and i am not in america and i am unlikely to ever be in america if i'm being honest so <laughs> a lot of the time things are happening and i'm just not involved because of logistical reasons but this year everything's virtual um so i am involved which is super yeah. fun and i love it <laughs> so yeah. Yeah, it's worked out for me, I guess. Um, silver light, silver, there's always a silver lining somewhere. Sometimes you gotta really hunt for it. Yeah. But like stuff like this definitely helps. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got another question. Um, oh, that's so sweet. It's a question for me too. Uh, for both of you, do you have any comfort rom-com movies? Ooh. Right? That's a, <laughs> she tricky. She real tricky. Okay. Um, I will say, I, <laughs> I will say, I honestly am a big, like, Meg Ryan fan, and I very much love You've Got Mail. <laughs> like, a classic. I, it's a classic. I love it very much. I love, I love Tom Hanks in a way yeah. that is very real. And so, like, you put Tom Hanks and Reg Meg Ryan in something together, and, like, <laughs> and then surround it with bookstores. Yeah. Nice. Hi. Hitting all the notes. Like, I am here for that. I am present and accountable <laughs> to it to me. Um, and then I know this is incredibly obvious, but um, P.S. I love you. I've probably oh, watched yeah. that. I've yeah. watched it a million times. Like, no, it's one of my, like, background movies. I'm doing dishes. And I'll just, like, Aww. throw on P.S. I love you just because it, like, gives me good heart feels. So, yeah. yeah, so those are probably my two, like my favorite, like old school, and then my favorite kind of new school. That's cute. Um, <laughs> I actually, the last film I watched at the cinema before we locked down was Emma, um, and it's uh, Jane Austen's Emma, but it was like obviously the book is a rom com, but it's an olden days rom com. But this film really like caught 
it gave it like a very modern rom-com feel despite being a period piece and it was really sarcastic and really cute and I loved it. I love Emma. Oh, <laughs> good. Because she's such like a sharp heroine and it's like lifelong friends to lovers, which is one of my favorite tropes as well. So I really like that. Yes. And then I had, I was going to say, there was someone who said a really cute meme about that movie where they said like, oh, I really liked Emma, but I felt like they stole everything from the movie Clueless. Oh my God. <laughs> love that. And I was like, that is beautiful. And I love that very much. <laughs> I love stuff like that. <laughs> yes, me too. Oh, so good. Anyway, sorry to interrupt. I just felt like I needed to tell you that. <laughs> I don't even know if this counts as a rom-com, but I really liked um, Focus, which was Will Smith and Margot Robbie. I'm like yeah. obsessed with Margot Robbie. Um, oh, they like, yeah. like do a heist or like a scam or whatever it's called together. And they're, oh, I love that. That whole film was so weird. I remember being in the cinema like, what is happening? But it was a lot of fun. <laughs> and, I, and like, I imagine they probably would have some super fun chemistry together too. Yes, they were so fun together. Like so funny. I think obviously Will Smith is like a comedic genius and Margot okay. is really funny as well. So they were really, love that one. <laughs> Yes. Uh, now I want to like watch Hitch. Hitch is on um, <laughs> on Hulu. You can like watch Hitch on Hulu. And I'm like, ooh, I might watch Hitch later. That seems I like a good have idea. A DVD of Hitch, which probably sounds no! really weird. <laughs> no, not at all. Hitch is amazing. <laughs> it's so good. Like, uh, give me just give me Will Smith. Smith just like throwing swagger at me for two mm -hmm. hours. Yes. Please, everywhere. Oh, <laughs> this reminds me as well of when J-Lo used to do a lot of rom-coms, like the the monster-in-law, and they always used to make her like, they'd be like, oh, she's she's Italian, she's Greek, <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> we'd be like, okay. <laughs> sure, go for it. You do you, boo. <laughs> No, that is super, that is super fair. That was definitely like a hardcore trope of like the 90s, early 2000s. Mm -hmm. it was just like, we don't need to, we don't need to be accurate in our representation. It doesn't matter that it's there, right? <laughs> like, she's here. That's well, gotta we, count for something. And it's like, take sure. what we give you. And we were like, yes, yes, we will. <laughs> no, we will, because it's all we have. <laughs> But how far we've come, right? Exactly. <laughs> we've come so far, and there's only so much more to go. So, like, I feel like I feel like we're on a good road. There's a lot about this year that super duper blows, but <laughs> so much. Like, but there are other things that are great, and mm -hmm. that is okay. Like, we will get through this year because rom coms exist and we can escape into beautiful worlds just like the worlds that you create with your beautiful wonderful books Thank you. of course <laughs> all right everyone i think that we're all set for questions i cannot i oh gosh i'm getting all gushy and weird thank you for being here <laughs> <laughs> thank you for having me i've had so much fun of course me me too and i just want to say that your books are um they're beautiful and they're powerful and they say a lot while also bringing so much joy. So thank you, thank you, thank you, <laughs> of course. So, and of course I wanna thank everyone who's here. Thank you all so much for coming to this event. Uh, do not forget to push that green button below and purchase Take a Hint Danny Brown. Um, and also make sure to keep your eyes out um, because of course now my brain is totally farting on the name, <laughs> what is going on, actor age, Eve Brown. Uh, comes out in March, so make sure to keep an eye out for that so you can pre-order it. Um, and we are offering today a discount of 10% if you put event in your checkout. So, and then make sure to check out the links in the um, in the chat as well for the other books that Talia recommended, because all of those, you can also get a 10% off discount. So get mm -hmm. on it, people. Get, get your lives. Um, <laughs> make sure to keep an eye out um, for our events on our website, barbersbookstore.com, and then go to the events page where we have a bunch more events. Our next themed month is thrills and chills. So it's thrillers and horror novels. So we'll be featuring events with thriller and horror authors, which will be super duper fun. Um, and then also keep an eye out for our um, 
our anti-oppression inclusive book club that is called Culture Exposure. And our next meeting is actually happening this upcoming Wednesday. And it features the book, your, let's actually have it right here, Your House Will Pay, which is a beautiful book about um, the LA riots that happened in the 1990s and two families, a Korean family and a black family that are dealing with the ramifications of a very violent act. It is beautiful and powerful and I can't recommend it enough. Please, please, please check out the book. You don't have to read the book to come to the talk. Um, we hope that maybe you'll like the book from our talk and then want to get it. <laughs> but please, please, please check it out. That'll be next Wednesday at 7 p.m. And as always, please make sure to keep checking out our bookstore and keep checking out our events and everything. And thank you again, Talia, for being here. Appreciate it so, so much. Thank you. Thank you for coming, everyone. Thank you. All right, <laughs> go get some sleep. <laughs> Go get some sleep. Have a good Betty. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> bye. Bye. bye.